What's going on guys, Unknown Player here and today in this video we've got a couple more Destiny 2 related topics to discuss including a bunch of locked activities that were recently discovered and Bungie actually made a statement on. We'll also be going over some of the best new weapons coming soon from events and also some exotics that have been changed and updated since the latest patch. So let's begin with talking about some of those locked activities. Now as it turns out, something a lot of people started noticing in the past couple of days is that some of the end game activities are actually locked behind the DLC and or have a high light level requirement preventing some people without the DLC and unable to reach those light levels from completing them or doing them in the first place. The most notable activity was Trials of the Nine which you full stop couldn't play without the DLC. The Prestige Raid was also now 3.30, the Prestige Nightfall was similar and also the Heroic Strike playlist which of course was a standard feature ever since the launch of Destiny 1 but wasn't in Destiny 2 at launch but now requires the DLC to play full stop. So Bungie fairly quickly came out with a pretty big post detailing why those decisions were made in the first place and also that they're going to be reversing almost all of those lockouts which of course is good and then also they announced some more details on upcoming events and new features to certain activities. So all these things I'm about to mention are going to be in a patch coming out tomorrow or in a couple hours or maybe it's already out by the time you're watching this video but it's going to be with the weekly reset of course on Tuesday after the maintenance and also alongside the big second half of the December update. So like I said, Bungie are reversing pretty much all the lockouts. So these are going to be bringing the Prestige Leviathan Raid back down to 300 instead of 330. So regardless of the DLC, you can now play it. And this will also, of course, let you get the trophy, which was inadvertently locked behind the DLC. Charles the Nine is also now going to be accessible to everyone without the DLC, except for when the map of the weekend is a Curse of Osiris DLC map. So then obviously you will need it, but most of the time you won't. This also does make that trophy or achievement still available to everyone but they did note that the new ornaments and weapons that came with Curse of Osiris are still of course going to require it. Now the one thing that's not going to be changing is the Prestige Nightfall. That is going to stay how it is as the pinnacle activity in Bungie's words, so at level 330. But to compromise they're going to change the trophy or achievement to not require the Prestige Nightfall as one of the Prestige activities. So that's of course again making the trophy available to everyone without a DLC. The normal Nightfall is still going to be available to everyone except for of course when it is a DLC strike for that week and they also reminded us that Iron Banner, Faction Rally and the Dawning are always going to be available to everyone, no DLC required. So of course those changes are going to be added to the game very quickly with the next weekly reset. They also announced some further changes happening in the future. These are going to be adding a third difficulty to end game activities which is going to require the DLC and always be light level relevant so people can always play the normal prestige versions without DLC but the new highest level is always going to require it. Now one of the more interesting things they said is that they'll be improving the heroic strikes with new challenges and new modifiers which sounds promising and also opening up the heroic strike playlist to people without the DLC which is definitely much needed. So I think we're about halfway with the heroic strikes being a viable activity right now they're pretty much nothing more than a difficult strikes with a few more tokens but with modifiers coming and if they add strike loot then it'll be definitely worth playing again. So it's always nice to see Bungie address and also fix these concerns so quickly after they were initially raised. The lockouts in themselves weren't actually anything new from Destiny 1. You did always need the latest DLC to play Trials. It was always a big complaint how the raids became irrelevant so quickly after every expansion. And also the highest level of Heroic Strike playlist did always require the DLC. But I think it's because Destiny 2 doesn't have a ton of endgame choices. It seems a lot more restricting and doesn't really translate well into the sequel. Which is why I think a lot more people weren't happy about this. But as always, do leave your thoughts down below in the comment section. I know some people will be happy about the content being more accessible without the DLC, and some people aren't very happy about the Prestige Leviathan having a lower light level now, and also dropping less powerful gear, which is a byproduct, I guess. But as always, you can't please everyone, but that is an additional thing being added to tomorrow's update that I want to let you guys know about. So next up, we're going to talk about some of the upcoming events and also loot rewards that you can expect inside them. Some pretty interesting stuff, but something else Bungie also unfortunately announced in that blog post was that the faction rally supposed to go live tomorrow is going to be postponed. So it's probably going to go live in a week or two from now. But because they're changing the events to not require DLC access, this is why faction rally is going to be delayed. I'm guessing there's some sort of bug. They didn't really explain why, but faction rally is no longer going to be running this week, but probably next week or the week after. Of course, with Season 2, there are a bunch of new loot rewards and a lot of really interesting stuff, especially the Trials, Faction Rally, and also Iron Banner weapons. So I wanted to highlight these weapons so you know what to look out for, which is good, because there are definitely some pretty interesting guns here. So beginning with Iron Banner, some of the best ones that caught my eye is firstly the Auto Rifle, and this one is obviously a reskin of the Scathe Lock, but it's actually in the different archetype, so it shoots a bit slower. This is in the Precision Frame, so it seems like a very stable and pretty consistent weapon. It's got accurized rounds for bonus range, or steady rounds for bonus stability, which is a very good perk, and also under pressure with improved stability and accuracy as the magazine gets lower. So it seems very stable, it's got a very solid set of perks, so it's going to be a reliable Auto Rifle for sure. 
There's also the Pulse Rifle looking very similar to the Raid Pulse. This thing also has Outlaw, but it seems to have a bit of a faster reload because you can choose between a Pender Mag for a bigger magazine or Drop Mag for even faster reloads. So it seems very similar. It's also in the adaptive frame. So if you haven't done the Raid, then this is a pretty good alternative from PvP. There's also a Vice Scout Rifle. Now this one, of course, is going to be Energy, and this one has Dragonfly. So of course, again, just like Outlaw, is nowhere near as good as it was in Destiny 1, but it's a decent perk. But this one also has high caliber rounds and extended mag, so it seems pretty good for PvE. They're also adding an Iron Banner Shotgun, and this one is going to be in the Precision Frame with Accurized Rounds for bonus range, and also Opening Shot, so that first bullet is going to have even more range and bonus accuracy as well. Pretty good for PvP. Now, moving on to some Trials weapons that caught my eye, there are some pretty good ones here. Firstly is the Scout Rifle. Now, this is almost like the name is Midnight, but except the Lightweight Archetype. So it fires a bit faster, almost like a Midar, but this one has Explosive Payload as the final perk. So this thing looks very solid. It's also got Hit Fire Grip or Slide Shot. So it's almost like a name is Midnight, but a bit more PvP focused. Of course, these weapons are added on top of the existing Trials weapons, so we already have an existing Energy Scout Rifle, so this one is going to be Kinetic. The same as this next weapon, the Last Breath, the Auto Rifle, this is also going to be Kinetic. So this one has Ambitious Assassin, overflowing the magazine based on the number of rapid kills before reloading, Dynamic Sway Reduction, Slide Shot, and it's in the Adaptive Frame, so it seems pretty solid and kind of well-rounded. There's also the Pulse Rifle, of course, we already have a Kinetic one, so this is going to be Energy. This is in the Fast Rate of Fire archetype, so the same as the Lincoln Green or the Time War Inspire, but this one has full auto, so definitely very nice to have on these fast rate of fire weapons. Don't need to worry about spamming the trigger, you can just hold it down, and also has quick draw as well, so seems pretty good. It's basically going to be a full auto bullet hose like Clever Dragon. There's also the Hand Cannon going to be in the Energy category. This came very close to being a solid weapon because it's got Outlaw and is in the Precision Frame, but unfortunately the main perk is Grave Robber, which is pretty awful. I still don't think Grave Robber should be in the game. It kind of ruins weapons, to be honest. But if you are looking for a Hand Cannon with Outlaw, then it's still going to be a pretty decent weapon. So even though Faction Rally is going to be delayed, I still wanted to mention the three winning weapons. All three of them are Auto Rifles, so you can pretty evenly compare them. In my opinion, the one from Future War Cult I think is the best out of the three. This one is Adaptive. It's also got Tactical Mag or High Caliber Rounds, which of course is very good, and Snapshot. So this weapon is very solid. I've used it before when I played the DLC early, so I think it's probably the best out of the three, to be honest. The one from New Monarchy is a Hacker Auto, and this one is in the High Impact frame, with also High Impact Reserves. And this archetype did actually get a buff recently in the latest patch, so it may be decent. And Dead Orbit has a Viced Auto, so pretty similar to the Perseverance and the Valakadin. It's going to be okay, it's got Zen Moment and Steady Round, so it's going to be pretty stable, and maybe one of the better ones out of the Viced Autos. So next up, I want to talk about some of the pretty big changes inside the latest patch that I think went quite unnoticed. But a couple of exotics got overhauled perks completely different to they used to be and may change your opinion based on what they do now. So firstly are the Lucky Pants for the Hunter. These used to give you simply a really fast draw speed for hand cannons, basically quick draw and also more accuracy on the first shot. But now they have a unique perk completely different where every precision hit you get with a weapon is going to reload that bullet into a stowed hand cannon. So you can essentially empty your hand cannon and then swap out for another weapon. Each precision hit, not even a kill you get, is going to give you one bullet into that hand cannon you put away. So it kind of reloads it for you and you kind of swap back and forward. Now the best part is they didn't actually remove the original perk on these. It's now added as a hidden bonus still on there. So these boots basically now have two exotic perks now. The original one about the quick draw and initial shot accuracy, which is now a hidden perk. And of course, the new one about reloading bullets when you swap out to a second weapon. So I think it's pretty cool how they simply added a new perk instead of removing the old one. There's also the Karenstein armlets for the Warlock, and these also got an overhaul. So these used to heal you on melee hits and give you ability energy. But now, when you hit something, instead you're going to get increased armor and mobility, and low health enemy is going to be highlighted for you. And then if you get a kill, it's going to give you a health back. So another pretty drastic change how it used to be. There's also the fighting line which is now updated and this is not completely useless like it was before. I tried it out but it doesn't seem too fantastic. It is definitely better but it's still quite a pain to use. You have to be really accurate with the thing and try not to miss which is very hard with a grenade launcher like this. But it's definitely better but not fantastic in my opinion. They did also fix a bunch of bugs on the Mask of the Quiet One, ACD slash Zero Feedback Fence, the Starfire Protocol, Peacekeepers, June Marchers and the Darcy. So not really buffs but fix some things that prevented them from being as good as they were supposed to be. But I want to see a lot more exotics get updated and for Bungie to not be afraid to buff them, especially in PvE. I think the Skyburner's O3 example needs a ton more damage and also if it could do like 10 or 20% more damage to Cabal. The Rat King as well needs a ton of stuff improved by it. And there's quite a lot of exotic armor pieces that I think are just pretty bland and forgettable. I want to see a lot more stuff like Orpheus Rig 
that should be the benchmark in my opinion of how exotic should be and how they give you pretty much a new ability and play style but it's a start they said they are going to continue to improve exotics and let me know down below in the comment section which ones you think should be improved and buffed so as always, if you enjoyed the video and would like to support the channel, then a like rating down below would be awesome. I really do appreciate all the constant support. We just passed 800,000 subscribers, so massive thanks to you guys for that. Look out for a video tomorrow covering the Masterworks weapons, all the other stuff inside the update. Should be a pretty big one, but until then, you can click the image on screen to watch a recent video I made, and I'll see you guys in the next one.